What's going on guys, it's Rich here from Vanilla Bit Tutorials, and today we're going to be going through a no BS walkthrough of how you can implement a working login and registration system on your iOS app using Firebase authentication. So for those of you who don't know, Firebase is just an amazing cloud platform tool that allows you to do a variety of things. You can set up database options, you can set up storage for photos and videos, you can set up, you know, authentication login systems, which is what we're going to be doing here today, and a lot more. So um, before I even begin, just a preview of this tutorial, we are not going to be coding a step by step each line of code instead i have a working project that i want to just show you and explain to you how it works so that you can go ahead and do the same on your computer all of the code that's used in this project will be linked below in the description so make sure that before you even start click that link in the description download the code um, just so that you can follow along on your own computer because again i'm not going to be typing out the code line by line this is a no bs tutorial we're going to skip through that we're just going to go straight into how this app is working and um, how you can set it up on your own computer so before we begin, let me just show you the app. Um, basically, it's a simple login system. Um, if you don't have an account, you can register for one. You can set your name, last name, email, password. Um, and then once you register, you can click login. Um, so in fact, let's just do an example. Let's register for Richier, um, millibit, and then richier at gmail.com. And then just create a password. Um, I'll click sign up. There you go, now I'm logged in. So now let's say I leave the app, I close it, and then I open it again. I'm automatically logged back in, and if I want to log out, I can click that. So then I'm always logged out, and then I can log back in using the same credentials. So it's a simple screen, um, and it connects to my Firebase authentication service. So uh, before we get started, what you want to do is go to console.firebase.com and click create a project. Once you create your project, enter your name um, of the project, enter iOS, and then simply go to Firebase authentication, and there will be step-by-step -step guidelines of how to set it up with your project. Basically, setting it up with your project involves doing this thing called creating a pod file. So anytime you want to use an external library, you need to include it in a pod file. When you create your app in Firebase, it will take you through how to do this. But just as a summary, you enter um, pod install after creating this file and you write pod and instead of AF networking that shows on this documentation, you would write something with Firebase. Um, and then it creates your pod file in your Xcode project and then you open up an Xcode workspace to use that with Firebase. So that's just the setup part. We're not gonna go through that as much, um, but I just wanted to preview that. Anyways, um, this is the Firebase documentation. I'll also link this in the description. The first step again, it's to you know run pod install and add a dependency to your pod file. We're not gonna go through that. The steps um, are shown to you when you create your app in Firebase. So now we're gonna go directly into our actual application and talk about how it works and how you can implement this same type of procedure in your app. So let's just start with the storyboard. Um, I just have one simple storyboard with three screens. The first screen is login, second screen is the registration, and the third screen is just the main page that shows up with a log out button and it says welcome user and it shows the username. Okay. So let's start with login. You can create a view controller and simply add these um, properties. In this case, we're gonna just log in with email and password. In the documentation, there are different ways that you can log in. For example, in the left side um, panel, you can see that there's Google sign-in, Facebook login, Apple sign-in. That all we can do later in this tutorial, we're just gonna do a simple email login. All right, so this is just a basic layout with the email, password, login button, um, and then register button. This register button has a segue connected to it that takes you to this sign up page, so that when you click the button, it takes you to the sign up page if you wanna create a new account. Now, the way we actually operate with this app is that the actual login button doesn't have a segue associated with it. Instead, there is a segue associated with the whole view controller with an identifier of go to main. So the way an identifier works is it, it isn't triggered when you click the login button because it's not associated with the login button. It's associated with the view controller. So once the login is authenticated by Firebase, which I'll show you how to check, uh, we automatically enlist our go to main segue, which is the identifier. And then that segue connects you from this view controller to the first page. Same thing with the registration. There's no segue connected to the sign up button. Instead, there's just a segue connected to the view controller itself. When you click sign up, we authenticate the sign up and make sure that it actually happened in our code. And if it did, then we enlist our go to main segue, which again, go to main is the identifier and that automatically takes you to the screen. So again, that is the logic behind how these view controllers work. The only button that has a segue attached to it is register that takes you to this page, the second page, but the rest of the pages only have segues associated with their view controllers. And those segues take you to the main page if the actual registration or login was completed successfully. Okay, now that we understand how the storyboard and the UI works, let's just go directly into the code. So this first page, the login page is called view controller. Notice I imported Firebase and Firebase auth. This is something you need to do um, just to use the Firebase login system. Then um, at the bottom, you should override view will disappear and override view will appear, which are basically functions that get called anytime um, your app is starting or your app is about to leave. Um, basically what you do here in view will appear is you create something called a handle and this variable is declared up here as an auth state did change listener handle. What it means is that it's just a listener. So anytime your user successfully logs in or logs out, it gets called. Um, basically the app says, hey, Mr. Handle, um, a user has logged in. So then um, you can then do logic in your handle. So again, we create a, our handle and we say it is a state change listener and then we define it. So now anytime the user has successfully logged in or logged out, this function will be automatically called because we just registered it as a change listener. 
we'll go through this code a little bit later, but basically it says if the user successfully logged in, we show the main screen, which is this screen. And if not, we do nothing. Same thing in the view will disappear. We basically remove the change listener so that we're not, we, same thing in the view will disappear. We basically remove the change listener just so that we are not calling our listener after our app has already disappeared because there's no point in that. Now that we, and this listener code of the view will disappear containing the state change listener and the view will appear containing the state change listener, this code should be in every one of your view controller files that accesses login data. It's basically universal code that you'll have in all of those files. Um, so now let's just look at how the actual logging in function works. And then later we'll look at the registration. So first of all, um, just take a look at the email field and the password field. Um, these are just outlets declared um, that connect you know, these UI elements to the code. Um, and then this is the meat of this file, the login function. This is just an action that is called automatically when the user presses login. We take the email from the text field using email.txt, exclamation mark signifies that we are force removing the text from it. Even if they didn't enter anything, we want to populate that in email. Then we run a function called auth.auth.signin, and then we pass in um, some variables to with email, which is the email. Then we run a function called sign in. Anytime we're doing anything with Firebase, we do auth.auth, .auth, and then we run the function. So dot sign in. We're passing in the email, and then we're passing in the password. Now you're going to get a result in this function of whether or not the sign in was complete or not. So if it was an error, we just print out the error and we show an alert. So some examples of errors could be if the user tries logging in, but the, their account doesn't actually exist, right? In that case, the error.debug description will have an error that says, look, the, the account doesn't even exist. There's a variety of errors, you know, if the network isn't working. Um, so you, you want to make sure you have some error catching system. Then I call my own function called show alert that just says cannot log in. Show alert, again, this code is all in the description. I'm not going to go through what it does as much, um, mainly just it shows a pop-up on the screen using a UI alert controller that just says whatever the error is by passing in the error. Um, so we show an alert saying cannot log in. So uh, in fact, I can just show you what that looks like. If I try logging in with um, just some random email that doesn't make sense and a password that doesn't make sense, I will get an error pop-up that says cannot log in, and that's coming in from show alert. Okay, so this is just the code that basically checks if there's an error and logs you in, but how do we actually know if the user's logged in? Well, remember those listeners that we registered earlier. With view will appear, we registered a state change listener. So now let's say you click login, that code runs, the user's logged in, automatically this function gets called again. Now we can say if the current user, again, anytime we're doing Firebase stuff, do auth, auth and then the function or the variable. So in this case, if the current user is not nil, which means if the user exists because we just logged them in, they should exist now, then we need to present the first screen, which is this screen. If not, then don't do anything because the login wasn't successful and we already showed an error earlier. So last thing I want to show you is present first screen, which is another function that I um, put in this code. Basically what it does is it performs that segue that I talked about earlier that takes you to the main screen. Remember what I said about how there's no segue connected to the login button itself. Instead, there's just a segue connected to the main view controller with an identifier of go to main. You do that is you control drag from the view controller into whatever page you want to be in. And then you attach a listener to it by entering the name of whatever um, identifier you want the segue to be. So in this case, there's a segue with an identifier of go to main that connects the login screen into the main screen. So we just perform that segue and then we print registered user. So automatically, now we are sending them to the main screen. That's pretty simple. And now let's go through what the registration screen does. Again, it's very simple logic, same exact thing. Okay, so let's look at register controller. Um, so this is the screen again, and we're asking for the first name, last name, just as a formality, really all we're doing is looking at their email and password. Again, we import Firebase and we import Firebase auth. Again, whenever we have a Firebase app that uses authentication in our view controller, we want to override view will appear and view will disappear and set up our um, handle that basically adds the state change listener and removes the state change listener, which we talked about earlier. So now let's talk about what actually happens when you click the sign up button. Again, there is no segue associated with it. Instead, there's just this ID action, which means this function gets called when you click sign up. So let's see what happens when you click sign up. Basically what we do is we do dot create user again with auth dot whenever we're using a Firebase function and we pass in the email and we pass in the text the same way we did so earlier. Now, again, I'm not going to go through this too much because it's the same type of code as last time. We basically show an alert if there's an error and we print error.debug description and that's it. We've already registered the user by doing create user. So now in our listener, the same way we used our listener last time, we check if auth.auth.current user is not nil, meaning if we've created a user, then present the first screen. If not, then don't do anything. Again, the same exact code as last time. Then in our first screen, this is the last part, the first screen, which is, you know, the actual pop-up that appears after you log in, we want to display the username. So again, as, as we did in the previous um, screen, we import Firebase, Firebase auth, and then we have these um, view will disappear and view will appear functions that contain the state change listener. Now what we do is the moment uh, it seems that someone's been logged in, we set our username field, which is this, equal to the user's email, right? And the way it works is when you do, when you have the state change listener, it returns your user. So then you can do something like user.email um, to get their email or user. Um, a bunch of other functions that can get um, a user's information. 
And that's pretty much all this page does. Um, I also have a logout button up here, which is connected with this logout action. And all it does is signs out. So again, auth dot auth dot sign out will sign out the user. If it doesn't work, just print error signing out, but it will work if there's like a stable network connection and everything. And then once you sign out, then you would have to log back in using the code we declared earlier. So that's pretty much a brief overview of how you can create this login framework. Um, the, that's basically all I have for today. Again, click the link in the description for the resources notes um, from this tutorial. I'll upload the code there too. Um, but yeah, thank you.